Now, thank you for staying with us. Charlo the Chef from charlothechef.com has stayed with us because you can never have enough Charlo of a Sunday morning. How are you, Chef? Good morning. How are you? I am living the dream. All the better for seeing you and smelling what's cooking a in the heart, kitchen. A hearty beef and Guinness casserole. Oh, yeah. Parsnip, creamy parsnip mash. Stuff of dreams, stuff to die for. Absolutely right. fabulous. Yeah, so I have, I have, I've got to start here with our sealing our beef off. And it's important, the recipe is one kilo of beef. Uh, it's important maybe to seal your beef off in two batches. Okay. What we want to do, we want to achieve is to lock in the flavours. You're not going to achieve that if you, if you throw the whole lot in together. you just boil so the meat, wouldn't you? Yeah. Also, we're doing casserole, so it's a casserole dish. Okay. Um, I had this dish most, most of my life, I'd say. Yeah. Um, brilliant uh, a dish, and it has a, a lidded dish as well, because we're pop popping it in the oven. Now, what type of uh, beef are you using? What I'm cook? using a, a chuck beef, okay? That's fantastic for casseroles for stewing. It's also cheap. Cheerful and it's also easy in the pocket. Okay? okay, and we're going to tip a hat as well to students today. Okay, all going back to their colleges. Uh, this is a great dish for batch cooking as well. Yeah, you've got a little example of it here. So this is one that you've made. Oh my, we can see that, lads. But you've done up like one portion here, and you label it then. Exactly. Label it. Give it three months. So cool, cool the product down. So wherever your batch cooking, so it's a stew, it's casserole, beef and Guinness is what we're doing today. Yeah. I made it last night. Cool it down for 90 minutes. Decant it into your tubeware tub, lid on. Date it, very important to date what's in it and watch your best before. Three months on the hold for? Three months in the freezer. In the freezer. Okay? Three months. That's get a great yourself show. organized. We get this recipe <clears throat> serves five people. So you get four of them if you're cooking on your own. Very now good. I've sealed my beef and you can see that. It's like you're like a caramelizing. Can you see yeah, that? Yeah, beautiful. So I've just jumped ahead, I sealed some a few minutes ago, and I've all the juices in there as well. Okay. okay. And um, so what we do in normal time would be take the beef out, leave all your juices in, add in then your autumnal veg, your roof yeah. veg, we've parsnips, carrots, celery, we've onions there, and we're gonna pop them in. Very we've nice. already jumped ahead, and you like my little bowl, my little heart shaped little bowl. bowl. So we're gonna pop them in as well on top of the beef. So you've already So done we're your building veg. flavors here, we're building flavors. We also, when we put, put the beef back in, it was with the juices as well. And now what yeah. we can do, we can start then to assemble the dish. Okay. A little bit of garlic goes in there as well. I have two cloves of garlic in the recipe, but this is a whopper. That's a big fella, that one, So we're that. just going to go with one, all right? Right. If I can hold on to it. And um, again, the microplane, great tool in the kitchen. Yeah. Fantastic. So we get all that um, garlic in there. You're almost puree in that garlic, aren't Exactly. You? So it's mincing, yeah. yeah. So there's none of this chopping on your chopping board. This is a really clean yeah. way to cook as well, OK? Yeah. I'm just going to pop that guy in there, right? Okay. OK. OK, so that's our garlic in there. Done. Beef stock next. So vegetable stock, beef stock. There's a point going in here. So we pop that in. And this is one of those dishes, Charlotte, that it's not going to do it any damage if you let it cook for an extra hour. Absolutely. You're going to get better. I have four tablespoons here, tomato puree. This gives a richness. This is <clears> adding <throat> depth to flavour. And this is, like, brilliant stuff. Okay. Brilliant. Now, I have a secret ingredient as well. Yes. So this secret ingredient, we're going to talk about it in a few and minutes. It's here. So it's here beside you, OK? And I'm about to guess what it is. If you guess what it is in two minutes, you can have a little feel there and, and, and come up with your uh, suggestion. Yeah. I'm going in with some See, bay leaves here. I little know you so of, well. A little bit pinch of sugar. And oh, what the really? sugar does is take, because of the tomato puree, the sugar <coughs> just tones down the tartiness a little bit, okay? But it's, 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 really, it's a really nice touch. Holy and then we have the most important, the VIP. The, the so, can of stout. The, guest, the can of stout. So 500 mils of our beef, uh, of, our, of our Guinness. Mm -hmm. And that goes in right on top. You see how easy this is? Oven on, preheat pre the oven to 160. I have a 140 fan and gas mark three. We're going to go in, we're going to go in low and slow. And we're not to be worried. Low and slow. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're like not to be worried about the alcohol in that Guinness because obviously that'll cook off during exactly. the Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of flour. And what the flour does, right? The flour will be your tickling agent, okay? Yeah. So just get it all together and we're going to put in then a little bit of um, salt and pepper. Can I have a reveal of this secret ingredient now? Okay, so you got to give me like uh, two suggestions. Right? Well, I think I know what it is because I know you so well. Well, I have one down here, so we reveal together. I'm going to guess that You're this gonna is... You're going to guess and I'll reveal, okay? Worcester sauce. Yeah, baby, there it is. This is my go-to for any shoes, any, any oh, uh, that's a great, great cottage pies. And we're going to get in there with about two, two large tablespoons. Excellent. We have our, a good bit of crack, fresh cracked black pepper. And the veg, nice the, store the, around. the veg that you put in there, Charlie, you can put in whatever you fancy, can't you? Exactly. Look, like we have parsnip mash here, so I've left the parsnip out because we're going to go with the mash. Okay. And notice I'm not doing a potato mash today, I'm doing a parsnip mash. I'm tipping my hat to my mate Pete, by the way, he can't have potato. 
What, is he allergic to them? Yeah, he's allergic to potatoes. Allergic yeah. to so, spoons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. dear, oh, dear. So, so you made a so parcel mash for him. Parcel mash, especially for Pete. Yeah. So I hope he tries this recipe. So this lid on. OK. Um, we then into the oven two and a half hours, 160. And you can forget about it. Go and get stuff done. You know, get your parcel bond down to boil them water. Yeah. I put in about two pounds of parcels. Peel the parcels. OK. I mean, these are the parcels. These are whopper parcels. Look at these guys. Yeah. You need to peel them. Chop them up, boil the water, about 12 minutes in the water. Don't let them go too mushy, OK? Because you'll, you'll spoil them. I wouldn't be the greatest them. parsnip fan now, but I might yeah. eat this because it's mash. I've strained them, Simon, and what I've done is oh, I've added God in the butter. Almighty. Yeah, I've added in the butter. Look and I'm going to add in a little tip as well when you're adding in the milk, hot milk, all right? All right, OK. So get the hot milk in. Another little tip as well is um, I have your stew bowl heating in the oven. Oh, Just right. taking the chill over. I'm putting in a little bit of cumin. Now here's our autumnal spices starting to come okay, into our yeah. cuisine. Yeah, yeah. All, all our flavours. So you've got your, you got your cumin in there, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Beautiful. And what I might add as well um, with the stew, or with the casserole, okay, and with stews, I've got a nice bit of rosemary and a nice bit of uh, thyme. Gorgeous. To go in there yeah, as rosemary well. Rosemary would normally be a bedfellow of lamb, wouldn't it? But exactly. But well, I'm just leaving them whole like this. Just pop <clears> them in there as well, just before you put them into the oven. A little bouquet garni exactly, going in there. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, can pop yeah, them yeah. out then, and then the flavours just enrich the flavours. Mm, beautiful. So we're going to... We're gonna, basically, all you do then is just mash your, your um, parsnip. And also, taste, 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 because some people might like a bit more background flavour of cumin, all right? Yeah. So you're not going to get that, you're not going to get this nice and silky and smooth like normal mashed potato because of the fibres in it. Okay, But it's yeah. a great, great addition to your dish. Now, okay. shall, shall we take out the casserole? Oh, please do, yeah, because there is an orderly queue forming <laughs> outside the studio as the smell of this casserole wafts around the building. There's a couple of people saying, what's the difference between a casserole and a stew? Well, the stew is heat from underneath and you have to constantly pay attention to it and store it. Casserole is heat from all sides, oh. pop the lid on and it's in the oven so there's no hassle. I never okay. knew that. There we go. So If ever I'm going to a pub quiz, will you come with me? <laughs> Not for the questions, just bring the grub. <laughs> no problem. I have, right. a bit of, I have a little bit of parsnip mash here that I've done earlier on. OK, I've tasted it, I've seasoned it up. I have my <coughs> stew here now. So what we're going to do is we're going to present, OK? Yeah. So parsnip mash, is, as you can see, is nice and creamy. You've cream. got that fairly pureed, haven't you? Yeah, like having a bit more time. A bit more time, obviously, than we have here. Yeah. And I, I, I've got it nice and creamy. Yeah. And I've got it nice and uh, the seasoning is to point as well. Salt, <coughs> pepper, and a little bit of the cumin. And look at that casserole. Look at that. You can that. see that. It goes real deep and, and rich. And what I've done is when you're chopping the vegetables, keep oh. the vegetables nice and chunky because you don't want them to dissolve. So what we're going to do is, we've got oh that Lord, beautiful, hearty, warmy, succulent beef tender. Fork tender as well, the recipe is fork tender. So it's, it's going to melt in your mouth. I have, a, I have a little heat taken out of that plate, or a little chill taken out of the plate, very important. Very good. A little bit of mm. um, the green, green grass at home, a little bit of parsley. Okay, Simon? They're telling me I can Just taste my wants, Charlo. Yeah, okay. I think I might, I might risk this one. <laughs> so a little bit of parsley over Not that I'm ready for her, aren't I? <clears throat> okay, bit of parsley over at the end. There we go. Look at that, chef. Look at that. <laughs> that is just a so bowl your beef of and Guinness casserole, wintry goodness. Fantastic batch cooking dish. You can chill it is down. Is it going to burn the mouth out? Not at all, not at all. Go for it. Go for same as, you know that. <laughs> but the, the beef is two and a half hours in the oven. The flavours, the Worcester sauce as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's a table for one or a table for two. Simon, what do you think? Oh, Charlo. <laughs> yeah. That's really It's a great go-to dish. Um, and again, three days. You're going to get three days out of this. You chill it down properly. Three days in the fridge. <sighs> three months in the freezer. Fantastic dish. Absolutely nice cracking recipe. Wintery autumnal Thank you, chef. Sunday. An You're welcome. Pleasure, Thanks as always. Full recipe details are up on our website or check out charlotteshef.com for more. Now, start of stage and screen, Norma Sheen has been doing things over there during this last item, but I'm not going to tell you what she was doing. We're back after this quick break. See you in a minute.